Hello there, I'm Andrew Chalkley. Um, by day, I teach at online education site Treehouse, and by night, I play around with electronics. Um, this is the first time I've given this talk, so I'm open to all sorts of feedback, um, positive and negative. So that being said, let's get onto it, because there's a lot of information in 20 minutes. So I'm going to speak twice as fast, so you can uh, watch it later to half speed. <laughs> um, so what is the Internet of Things? It's physical objects with embedded electronics, sensors, and software that connects to the internet. Whether if it connects directly over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, uh, not Bluetooth, or Ethernet, or through a gateway device through Bluetooth, like a smartphone. Some examples of IoT devices are smart thermostats like the Nest. Uh, people got turned off by them being taken over by Google, so they started building their own. Um, there's uh, Security systems, smart scales to see how badly you're doing from your last year's New Year's resolution. There's fitness trackers and smart mirrors and things like that. So let's just go over a quick history of hobbyist electronics. Um, what I call the pre-Arduino era, I'll tell you what an Arduino is if you've got no idea what that is, but you needed a, deg a degree to do electronics or to know what you're doing to get cheaper electronics from China that was kind of, ah! But um, now we've got the Arduino, which is an open source platform. You write uh, C on the device itself, and it's matured over the last eight years or so, and it's really reduced the price of, and uh, the uh, niggles of getting into electroni ele electronics. Um, because they're physical devices, they'll, they will cost money, so it isn't just tinkering around with software anymore where you spend your free time but you actually spend your cold hard cash as well. Um, but with Moore's Law increasing, uh, more powerful devices are in your pocket every day, which means that you can run things like JavaScript on these small devices, which is awesome. So you don't need to le learn C um, much. Um, so there's three main strategies for Internet of Things and JavaScript. There's JavaScript microcontrollers, which actually run uh, JavaScript on the device itself. It has a small runtime, nothing like V8, so you're not going to get the ES6 or all the performance optimizations that you're used to. So you're writing in ECMAScript 5. Um, and then there's uh, embedded Linux devices, which are full-fledged PCs in their own right, meaning that they boot up. There's a command line on them. You can run desktop applications on some of the, them. They've got the ARM chips, which are basically in your phones. Um, and they can run full node. Um, and then there's what I call hybrid solutions, where you have a host PC, and it talks uh, running Node.js, and it talks over a USB cable or Bluetooth to an Arduino with some firmware on it, like basically a dumb, thin client running on that device. And it, the brains is the host computer. So let's take a look at each one in detail. So uh, a microcontroller, if you're not familiar with that term, is basically a really teeny tiny computer with teeny tiny memory and teeny tiny um, processing speed. But it's super responsive at the low level inputs. Um, I've had the most experience with the uh, Sprina Pika, so I'll, I can talk in more detail about that. But then there's the Tesla 1, which has been replaced by the Tesla 2. There's going to be uh, a workshop later on today, presentation with Kelsey over there from the Tesla project um, for the Tesla 2. Um, but the Esprina Pico, it's got a little bit of um, JavaScript running on there for you to build your applications. So the Tesla 1 has been discontinued now. It's going to be replaced by the Tesla 2. And the runtime is a Lua runtime, but the JavaScript is transpiled onto it. So if you're familiar with Babel and you transpile that into ECMAScript 5, well, this tra transpiles your JavaScript into to Lua. And this was $60, if I remember rightly, when it first launched, but the Tesla 2 is going to be 35 and I'll talk about the Tesla 2 a little bit later on. The pros about this is it's got built-in wireless, and can you see those black things on the top and bottom there? Those are for plug-and-play modules, so you don't need to solder, which is really good for beginners. Um, it's Node.js compatible, that, and it's NPM compatible with modules that are written in pure JavaScript. So you can bring your own editor, you can use your own modern development um, uh, platforms. The, the cons is it can get a bit bulky when you're plugging in all the different modules. So 
uh, a lot of these con microcontrollers, instead of building outwards and horizontal, they build vertical like this. Um, it's, it was also expensive at the time. Uh, another con of this is it's no longer available, so you, you, can't, you can't use it. Um, but that's, this is part of the history of uh, where we're going in, in the JavaScript world and IoT. So this is the Esprino Pico. So that's that one on the left-hand side. So uh, those are to scale. I've just put them on there. <laughs> but <laughs> um, uh, this is a, has a tiny JavaScript interpreter running on this chip. So it's written in C, but you can type into it like a REPL, like your nerd REPL. Uh, this was kick-started. I was the first backer on this. And, I, and this is the first one here. There, there you go. Um, and I've got a project to show you using this Esprina today. Um, so it should be fun. The bigger board there is $40, and the Pico's $25, so we, we're getting a little bit cheaper now. The pros of the uh, Esprina Pico is that anyone with any device that can run the Chrome web browser can program this thing. So like if you've got a, a Chromebook, you can install the plugin uh, for the web IDE. Um, it's got Blockly support, so for people who aren't necessarily familiar with JavaScript or programming in general. Um, is small, so it's really easily embeddable into things. You can just plug this into your iPhone charger if you want. Um, and the community forum is awesome. I, when I was building my project, um, I, I, was, I reached out to the forum, and it, within 20 minutes I had an answer. And with, within a couple of days, I'd, I'd built my project, uh, having no idea what I was doing. So <laughs> that was that was positive. Uh, the cons are that it, it, it uses this Web IDE. It's this uh, Chrome extension. Uh, and you've got to go through their way of doing things. Um, so if you're used to a modern JavaScript platform, then you may be thinking, oh, I wish it was more like proper NPM and uh, package managing and things like that. Um, and it's just a thing. There's no Wi-Fi on it. So that means you've got to do a lot of soldering. And especially on a tiny thing like this, do you fancy that? Um, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and it's also still expensive. It's 25 bucks for this little tiny thing. And if you make a mistake, it's another 25 bucks every time you make a mistake. Um, depending on the hourly rate, um, it may be cheap for you, but maybe not. Um, and you're in uncharted territories here. You, you, I, I built this thing. Uh, let me show you. I'll show you it. So <clears throat> here. I've got an Esprina Pica, and on top there, there's a wireless card. These are two to three books each. And here is a uh, eight by eight display. It's a common part that you can pick up from an electronic site called Adafruit. There was no drivers for this thing. So I had to learn binary? What's that about? Like, to, 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 actually, <laughs> to actually get this up and running. And you don't need to do it now, because I've released it as an NPM module, so you can plug it straight in. So um, if you go to wifigotchi.com, that you'll be presented with three emojis. And my friend here, my internet connected friend, so this is, I'll pick this up from Fred Meyer at the supermarket here, and it's just a battery pack. So it doesn't have a face right now because it's not connected to the internet. So hopefully with the, the Wi Fi here or my phone as backup, yay! You're giving him a, a meh face, a smiley face. Can you make him frown? Somebody? There's lots of you. Press a button. Is he disconnected? He kind of disconnected already, can he? Anyway, maybe he's disconnected from the internet when I moved him a bit. Um, anyway, there he is. I'll just leave him there. Um, sorry, it's naked at the moment. Uh, there's no enclosure for it. Um, but is he changing? Is, is he changing? Yeah? Yeah, it's changing. OK, so he's happy right now. It's happy right now. Sorry. <coughs> um, so there's a simple communication that you can do. Uh, it's a popular bit of kit from Adafruit. And yeah, you, you, you're in uncharted territories. Um, I know there's a Tesla library for this, so that's a positive for Tesla. There you go. Um, so yeah, this Wi-Fi chip on here, that's this left thing. It's really tiny. It's on top of the Esprino. That's what it looks like without it. That's what it looks with it. Very similar at a distance. You can come and have a look later on. But um, these aren't just only used for communicating with microcontrollers like the Arduino or the Esprino or anything. 
Um, but they've got a microcontroller on them themselves. So you can actually write the Arduino code on it itself, this, this little Esprina. This is a dev board on the right. They only cost between two to six bucks each, which is fantastic. You can also yeah, write Lua on it, but also you can get the Esprina JavaScript runtime and flash it on these things. I was able to flash it and get the REPL up and running, but that's about it for now. Some people have had more uh, experience getting it up and running. Um, so I would say this is bleeding edge. Uh, the pros of this is it's really cheap. So if you butcher it like I did, this was the first one on Kickstarter. And when I was soldering this thing on, I forgot to solder these bits at the end. And then when I was trying to desolder it, the things were still in there. So it's like, oh, I've got to spend 30 bucks. So I've spent another 30 bucks for you all to see this beautiful face. Um, <laughs> so it's fairly immature right now. So the next group of um, products are Linux, embedded Linux devices. So each one of these computers are full-fledged computers in their own right. So the Tesla 2, the Raspberry Pi, and the chip computer, to name a few. And you can install anything on them, including full node, which is amazing. So I didn't have a, a, a picture of the Tesla 2 on a white background, so here's a diagram of the Tesla 2. And even better, they've learned me one for this presentation. That's what it looks like. That's how big it is. Comparison. Whoop. OK, this is a full computer. Uh, so it's unlike the Tesla one that had the Lua interpreter on it. This is a full computer, so you can put any stack on there if you want. It's got two USBs here, uh, power and data there, and an Ethernet port. So this is uh, an Internet of Things thing. Um, and then there's the Raspberry Pi. So this has got an acrylic case on it. This is the one on the left-hand side. This is a quad-core processor, so it's insanely fast. It's got a gig of RAM. It's got four USB ports, Ethernet. So this is an Internet of Thing because it's got an Ethernet port. Uh, the one on the left here doesn't have an Ethernet port. It's a lot cheaper. It's $20. The one on the right is uh, $25. It requires an SD card to run your Linux operating system on, and once it's on there, you know, you can you can run full node on it. And you can buy these Wi-Fi dongles to make it more internety of things, which are about 11 bucks. And then Thanksgiving came this year. And the, let's have it in comparison again. Sorry, I'm bobbing up and down. Um, this is the Raspberry Pi Zero. This is a full-fledged PC. This will run Minecraft. And uh, it's, it's specced somewhere between the A plus and the, uh, the 2B here. It's got a gig, gigahertz uh, processor and 512 of RAM. And guess how much it costs? $5. It's like cheaper than a latte, you know, at Starbucks or any establishment here in Portland. Um, $5 for a, for, for a thing. It's a thing. It's not an internet thing because there's no... Uh, network connectivity, but you can hook it up via the USB port or the mini HDMI there. Still requires an SD card to, uh, to get up and running. But that's five bucks. That's insane um, to make an internet thing. You feel a lot better about yourself uh, soldering this thing than something else that may be more, more expensive. And then there's the chip computer. This was um, back, uh, I think it was the Indiegogo Go campaign. It's a $9 computer. It comes out in June, so it's not released yet. It has about the same power, like a gigahertz of uh, uh, CPU speed, 512 of a meg of RAM, but it's also got 4 gig on it, so you don't need to get an SD card. There's a Linux operating system on it, and you can run full node on that as well. It's got USB and audio out. It doesn't have an HDMI, but you see that you can't really see it on this screen, I don't think. But on the, on the outer edge, there's these black um, headers for you to plug things into uh, vertically. So general pros and cons of Linux embedded systems. Um, they, they run any software. So any stack that you're comfortable with, you could run on here. And we're all comfortable with Node, so let's run it on these, uh, which is awesome. Um, I believe a lot of the binary packages do come from node source. Um, they can be cheaper than microcontrollers now. This is 25 bucks, uh, less powerful. Um, this is five bucks, uh, more powerful. You can run lots of different things on their full web stack. Um, and 
in particular with the Raspberry Pi, there's a lot of knowns about them. You, you know the software that can be run on them. There's plenty of tutorials on them. There's plenty of tutorials on the hardware. Whereas like other hardware devices may not be. You're, you're searching in forums, writing your drivers yourself, doing a lots of crazy, crazy stuff. Um, but um, I played around with the Tessel today for the first time. Thank you, thank you. Um, and the Raspberry Pi, the, the, the full-fledged PC, so they've got a boot up time. You've got to wait for them to boot up before they can start taking inputs and things like that. The Esprino, you don't need to wait that very, very long for the JavaScript runtime to kick in. So it needs to boot up. The IO on these things aren't as responsive as a, uh, a microcontroller. Uh, but there's more points of failure on the Linux devices because the, there's, a, there's, a, there's a more complex stack of uh, software on top. And that means that there's more points of attack for um, security issues. Um, but still, it's a physical device, so it's still expensive. It's not just you messing about in your own uh, free time. So the final solution is what I call hybrid solutions. So you've got your microcontroller like an Arduino, and you get a host computer that can run JavaScript like this Raspberry Pi Zero, and you connect it with a USB cable. And you use something like Johnny Five to communicate between the brains, which is the JavaScript device, uh, which in this case is the Raspberry Pi, and you flash a firmware onto this uh, Arduino to receive instructions of a serial to the, to, to the Arduino to blink lights and do things like cat food dispensers or your children dispensers if you, do, if you want to put them in another room and just give them candy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have not done that yet. yet. Um, uh, but yeah, this is Johnny Five. It's a JavaScript framework. It's not the robot from the movie, even though the robot from the movie is on there. That's nice. Um, so the hybrid solutions, you can program at a high level. You can use a more powerful PC um, or, or or other system like that. You get the best of both worlds, a modern uh, JavaScript environment with responsive I.O. on the uh, other objects, you know, like the Arduino. But you're dealing with more devices. This is the cons of the thing. It feels a bit more hacky that you're actually coding on a PC to communicate to things that could have the programming on themselves. Uh, there's more points of failure and attack, and it's more expensive because you're buying multiple devices. But if you're making complex robots, you probably want a smart brain with all these other electronics, and you, you're probably going to be spending a lot of money making an awesome robot anyway. Um, so the, the present and the future is awesome. With these cheap embedded Linux systems coming out, the, the competition is going to be fierce. People are going to make this better. It's going to be better because of the mobile phones that we've got in our po pockets with the faster processors. It's just going to get better, 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 better. You're going to use a modern stack. You can use any stack that you want. But it's not that mature right now in some areas. So I've been helping by giving contributions to the Esprina documentation site. That, and including more modern practices there. There's still a lot of where to go. So if you've got any experience building tooling, help there as well. Um, I'm also building stuff for the Ras uh, Raspberry Pi and other embedded Linux systems to handle networking, like scanning for access ports and then handling the network connection. With the Internet of Things devices, you have to handle all that yourself. And there's, I, I haven't seen any elegant solutions out there. So I'm, I'm, come join me and help me on that. So if you have any questions, um, you can ask me now. Uh, but we've got a minute left. Um, there's, there's me on Twitter, Chalkers. I publish um, short videos of what I'm tinkering with or, uh, on Vine. So I'm Chalkers on Vine too. And when the projects get to a reasonable state, I write uh, write-ups on Forefront.io. So thank you very much.